It's a real draft this time. It's not a mock draft. It's a roto league. It's a 12-team. It's eight categories, but it's not field goal percentage. It's effective field goal percentage. Let's see how it goes. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble, on TikTok at RedRock underscore Beeble, and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and we are available on all platforms. So, real draft. Most of my real drafts are slow drafts, so I can't really put them on the channel. This one's not. This is one that I just started a few days ago. I said, hey, I'm not actually in a roto league this year. I better start one up. So I asked a bunch of fantasy analysts who wanted to be in it. We're doing it as eight categories, but with effective field goal percentage, replacing field goal percentage, I think that's a better approximation of a player's actual value as a shooter. So we're including that in there. Uh, it is a roto league, 85 games played max per slot. I'm using the same positional slots that we use in the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Bowl. Three guards, three um, three forwards, a center, a guard center, a forward center, and a flex. We go 16 deep into the bench. So 16 total players, 10 starters, six bench. We have fab for this league, and it's a snake draft. And I am picking at number four. No? Yes, picking at number four. In this draft, I uh, haven't, haven't even looked at that. And who else is in it? It is me. It is Mike Catron from watching the boxes. It is... Who else is in this? Uh, Mitch Casey is in this. Um, uh, Karen Tawa from Fantasy Basketball International is in it. Uh, Thunder Dan Palio is in it. Alex Raclean is in it. Sloan Piva is in it. And Stan Sun from The Athletic is in it. And then we've got four, um, four listeners or four followers were able to jump in. Martin... I can see is in there, uh, whoever this guy is, essential quality. Jackson McIntyre, who is a guy who works for uh, Pro Football Focus, so he does a lot of uh, stat analysis for a different sport. And then Sam is in here as well as the other four people filling up the draft. So, um, yeah, we're at this roto draft going. We're going to get started really soon. I'll get to that in a second. Today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs make you look and feel good because they are shorts. We love wearing shorts, don't we? Everyone loves wearing shorts, surely. Although there are some weirdos out there who don't, but that doesn't matter. This is not for you. I'm here to con- actually I'm here to convert you to wearing shorts because Bird Dogs are the most comfortable shorts that you will find, and they'll make you look good. They'll make your thighs pop. They will stop the smelliness with their anti-stink sweat wicking fabric. Their cloud nick fabric also just makes them more comfortable. So whatever you're doing, playing golf, going to the shops, going to the bar, going to a friend's outdoor barbecue, going to a restaurant with your partner, Bird Dogs will do whatever you need them to do. They are so comfortable, you will never want to take them off. So go to birddogs.com slash LockedOnNBA or enter the promo code LockedOnNBA and you can save yourself. Well, no, you can't save yourself actually. Well, you can because they're good. And they're cheap. You get a free water bottle. It's a Bird Dogs water bottle free with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on NBA for a free water bottle at checkout. You won't want to take your Bird Dogs off. We promise you. Today's episode is also brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Tip off the NFL season with FanDuel, America's number, not NFL season, tip off the NBA season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when they place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's never been a better time. You know when people say, hey, when you're doing videos or social media, you should deliberately put a mistake in there so that people comment on it and then it helps the algorithm. 
Yeah, that was me deliberately saying tip off an NFL season. I, I deliberately said that. So comment away, please comment away and join Fangio because all their great odds and opportunities and spreads and futures and money lines and over-unders, it's all there, player props. They've got everything for the NFL season, which you're tipping off, or whether you're kicking off the NBA season, it is all there. Futures, MVPs, season wins, preseason games, in-season tournament odds. It's all over there at Fangio. So go to fangio.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. Fangio, official partner of the NFL, and do not forget to gamble responsibly. So let's uh, let's get ready for this mock draft. We are, at the moment of me recording this, I'm six minutes away. We'll flip it into the draft room right now, and we'll get ready to just we'll have a quick look at the order of picks there. So Mike Catron is picking, picking at number one. Martin is at two. Itty Bitty Giddy Committee, which I believe is Mitch Casey, is picking at three. Baby Billy's Bible Bonkers, which is me. I'm at four. Johnny Drama, which is Curran. He's at five. Essential Quality is a listener that I don't know his name. Um, Mojo Roto Casa House, which is a cracking name, by the way. Who is that? That's Thunder Dan Palio. Um, Sam is in there. Then Stan is at number nine. Jackson McIntyre is at 10. Sloan is at 11. And Alex Reclean at number 12. That's your order of the mock. No, mock. No, 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 mock. This is a driver got 50 buck entry into this with these analysts. Roto League, let's go. Okay, we are ready to go. Now, because this is a, a real draft, it's not a mock, I'm not here and going to be just discussing every single pick in detail and regaling you with anecdotes. I'll be a little bit quieter during this one as I focus more on what I'm doing, try and plan ahead a little bit more with what my pick is. I will be picking Steph at four if he's available. The change in format with effective field goal percentage, replacing field goal percentage helps Steph immensely. And I will be taking Steph at four if a guess to that. Um, all right. So Mike, Mike Martin, Mitch, then me. Mike loves his roto. Uh, Mitch doesn't do much roto stuff. Um, let's see what the other guy, Alex loves his roto at the end as well. Let's see. Mike is definitely taking Jokic. I hope, I hope that these guys let Steph fall to me. All right, again, this is a road. I think we're paying out top three in this league, fifty percent to first, and then whatever it is. I think it's thirty and twenty, or maybe it's thirty-five, fifteen to um, second and third. Jokic does got one. Martin, what will you do? Steph to me is is the guy here. And then Halliburton. And they look pretty clearly one, two, three. And I hope that Mitch allows that to... Ooh, okay. Interesting. So I am going to get one of Steph or Halliburton. I like that. That is good for me. Roto League, so we've got games cap. It's 85, not 82. So we go a little bit over. It's a little bit over the 82. Uh, everyone is in the draft, which is great. I am still talking like I'm recording a show. I can't help myself, can I? Mitch is thinking. He's thinking. Oh, and the asshole takes Steph Curry. Okay. All right. We're going to grab Tyrese there. Decision's taken out of my hands. It's got to be Halliburton. In this format, I would have loved Steph. The next guy probably is Lillard. I The reason that I wanted to put effective field goal percentage in here. Not necessarily about league balance or anything like this. I just think the field goal percentage is such an outdated way of viewing players. And the fact that unbelievable shooters, feared weapons, Steph in particular, Lillard, those sort of guys get downgraded because of their field goal percentage when in reality it's because they're taking so many threes and that makes them so good as players is something I wanted to change. Field goal percentage is such a silly metric for us to look at in any sort of valuation of players. I was debating removing three-pointers made as well because I'm not really sure we actually need that in fantasy given that it's not an oddity anymore. But I did keep it in for this because I couldn't find anything else I massively wanted to chuck in there. But I just made that one quick change field goal percentage for effective field goal percentage. And I'm hoping that something like that is able to you know, take hold a little bit. And there'll be people who argue, and I've heard it even from analysts, have said like, well, why would you want effective field goal percentage? It's so hard to calculate when a game's going on. Like no one's out there necessarily, I don't think, sitting out there going, well, my guy's gone six of 17. What percentage is that? Is it slightly different? Sure. But the website 
or your stat tracker just calculates it for you. So Lillard went at six, correct. So these guys are, I would guess, using Basketball Monster and putting that different category in there so they're understanding the value changes. That's why Steph went at three. It's why Lillard went at six. It's why Shea and Doncic have fallen down there. Remember, it's Roto, so playoff schedule doesn't matter. Anthony Davis, well, that's a lot higher than the projections like Anthony Davis from Stan. So let's see what he does there. Lamello, yeah, okay. Lamello is a strong pick from Jackson. Kevin Durant at 11 is also a strong pick. Again, the injuries in Roto are a little bit easier to deal with. Some people might think it's the opposite and you want more total value in Roto. And the reason you don't, as I forget to concentrate and just talk, is that in Roto, if someone gets hurt, you replace them with your 11th guy or 12th guy. It's not the 15th guy or the waiver wire player. Secondly, in Roto, wherever you get the games played, it doesn't matter whether they miss him in December or March or whatever. So a guy that gets injured in a head-to-head league that gets injured in a playoff setting, well, it really, really hurts. In Roto, if they miss games during March, it it doesn't matter. Like, all the games count the same, whether they've been played or missed or whatever. So that ability to hold guys on your extended bench in Roto, you don't want players playing 30 games, obviously, but the replacement level is higher in a roto league than it is in head-to-head. Alex goes with Giannis and Sabonis. What an interesting pairing to start things off. Very, very intriguing. So Alex, in roto, is punting free throws, which, and I hope this is the case, which, in a competitive league, is definitely a way to do it. It is definitely a strong enough strategy to punt one category in a roto league, in a competitive environment. And the reason why, not to get too deep into it, but if your league is not super competitive in roto, that means the bottom three to four teams aren't super strong, is that if you punt a category, you end up being behind those guys. So in the other counting stats, if someone's low, they might get minimum of four or five. But if you have bad percentage or you actively punt it, you can actually fall down to a one in those categories which puts you, meaning meaning you need to be really, you need to be like 10s, 11s, 10, uh, 12, 11, 10, 9. But in a competitive league, you can win by getting 7s and 8s and, and that sort of stuff. As I need to just, uh, Michael Bolton, focus up. So what am I thinking? I'm three, four picks away. I started with, obviously, um, Halliburton. This is me, my brain, trying to figure out a real draft. As we go. So I've got Tyrese. Assists and points are still going to be hard to get. Doesn't change in... Oh, Kawhi is my guy. Kawhi. Kawhi in Roto, much better player than in head-to-head. His game suits it. The missed games aren't as important. If I can snag it, I will snag it. I Will I do it, though? Boy, but the no assists. Huh. I do like, but it's hap- I'm happy to get, well, but I can't do that now because this bloke has taken Kawhi. Huh, okay. So this is an intriguing pick because James Harden is probably the right selection for me, but I don't know how to trust that. How do I trust that? I, I can't trust that. Does Jaron make some sense for me? Des Bain is a very strong pick in this format. Hmm, Harden is the guy, but how do I trust it? I am going to, I'm going to take, Jesus Christ, I'm going to take Jaron. Hmm, Harden would have been absolutely perfect, but I'm not confident enough to get him there. Next round, I will if he slides in six picks. but Or Paul George is the other one that I will take. Marketing also in the mix. Hmm. All right, Mitch, what are you going to do? Are you going to pull the trigger on Harden? Hmm. Not much sleep. Got to drink the energy drinks. Now, my team really needs to focus on points because Halliburton and Jaron aren't gigantic scorers. 
Mitch takes Porzingis. Fair. It's fair. Now, I can tell the people who are using Basketball Monster Projections here and our draft tracker. I, I can tell who they are, so I sort of know who's going to pick who at what spot. And I can see one, two, three, four... I can see four people doing it, at least, including me, which is it makes it interesting. And, yeah, they're all sort of around where I am. Well, that's not hard to do, considering I'm at four. Paul George goes. Good pick. Marty... I was hoping we could get him. The Harden one is still looming. I just want somebody to take the decision out of my hands. As good as he can be for me, I just don't want to make that decision. Paul George would have been... Ooh, Towns will work for me too. Towns and Markinen, although... Oh, the assists, man. Who the fuck am I getting for assists? Because they are going to go, aren't they? That's why Harden is so appealing. He's getting the 10 assists, 8 assists, 9 assists. In Roto, I can deal with some shenanigans. Van Vliet. Okay, fine. Macau Bridges, fine. Interesting. Will the Paul George question mark team take Harden? I doubt it. Will Mitch take Harden? He might. So I'm down to Markinen, Harden, I don't know, but I want assist. Maybe it's James Butler. <sighs> it probably is Jim, although the effective field goal percentage works a little bit against him because it's not true shooting. It doesn't count free throws. It's just field goal percentage um, incorporating the value of threes. And of course, oh, Martin takes Jim. So he's got the Paul George Harden combo, which could work out really well. Might not though. So, Markinen is sitting there, but if I don't really sure, I don't want to waste the Halliburton assist, but I do need rebounds too. Hmm. Mitch is thinking, I reckon he had Harden at the top of that queue there. Towns' Towns's assists are appealing with rebounds. Or do I headmaster it? Well, the other one here is LeBron. Missed games, sure. Oh, do I just... My guys are... Oh, we took Lowry. Okay, so... I wouldn't take LeBron here in a head-to-head. I wouldn't take LeBron here if I had have got Kawhi or Harden. LeBron is my highest projected player. Towns is the one behind him. But getting a combination rebounds, which I'm low in, and assists, which are coming hard to get, and points. Interesting, Victor hasn't gone yet. I'm going to do it. I'm going to take LeBron. I don't. What is going on? No LeBron for me at all. Last three drafts, LeBron in every one of them. Hmm, Okay. Okay. I've got to be cautious about what I do in the next rounds because LeBron, let's best case him at 60, I reckon. Whew. Tough. What's Curran going to do? That's Johnny Drama. Yeah, Towns was a smart pick. Probably should have done that. Smart pick. The Jordan Poole's on my radar. I would like Jordan Poole to slide back around, but we are 15 picks away from that, so it's... Probably not going to happen. Jimmy, Victor have to be considered soon. Cade, Chet, Chet. Uh, okay, Jimmy goes to EQ, who is building a solid team. You see the slight roto strategy differences plus the effective field goal percentage differences here. Where is Chet on this list? Because I am queuing him up. Both Chet is forward only eligible. Fantrax. I know you've got a million dollars. Send it to me and let me fix some stuff. Because that's inaccurate. That shouldn't be like that. 
Um, all right, Fox at 31, Garland 32, Fox. Not really, I think that's too early. But snagging assists through Kyrie, Shea, and De'Aaron is strong. I think, I didn't like Sun's pick of Davis, but I do like his pick of Bam a little bit. Oh, actually, I don't. Oh, my projections don't like Bam in this format. Hmm. Cade going. I am absolutely shocked that Victor hasn't gone, but this is eight analysts, and a lot of them, Mike, um, Alex, even Sun, are going to be cautious on rookies early. Me, to a lesser degree. Mitch, probably to a lesser degree. Karen, yeah, probably to a lesser degree. Analysts, usually, most of them, push back a little bit on rookies early. Not really sure how Sloan views it, but it's his pick now. Miles Turner did not see that coming, but it makes a lot of sense. There's a couple of guys hanging around at the top here. Poole, the headmaster, the skater boy, Zach Levine. Who, oh, there goes Wemby. Oh, Alex did pull the Wembenyama trigger. This bloke comes on my show and tells me, we never know how to project rookies. They're always bad. And he takes Victor at pick, th- pick three, round three. Alex Reclean, I have word. If he takes Chet here, I'm going to roast the shit out of this bloke. I don't blame him for taking them. I'm just going to type that in. How very curious. Wow, wow, wow. Brunson at 37. Okay. Oh, there's other guys I would have taken there ahead of old The Burner. Not many, but there is a couple. Ogen and Obi gets a big boost in this as well, in this format, which I didn't really see coming, but there you go. Jordan Poole is being slept on. His effective field goal percentage is still a negative, but it's not probably as bad as some others. Well, there goes Mobley at 38, Holmgren at 39. What an interesting team Alex has. Giannis, Sabonis, Wembenyama, and Brunson. There goes the headmaster. What picks? Six six picks? Five picks. My recent video caused Luca to drop to eight. No, it's the format that caused Luca to drop to eight. Siakam. All right. I want... Do I... Mm, I don't want... Oh, do I want pool? I want Levine. Oh, Vooch goes. You can absolutely have him. All right. Levine is my good time boy here. A sweet cheese. Probably should put him in the queue if I'm going to talk him up. I'll throw Geordie Poole in there and OG in there as well. Did some... Oh, someone did take him. You and Poole. That that actually hurts a lot. One of the big risers in this format is Clay Thompson. Now, I'm not going to take Clay Thompson here. Um, I might... Shit. I might take Jalen. Oh, fuck. Jalen Brown? Do I take Beal? It's uncertainty with both guys. 20 seconds. And Anobi is the top of my rankings, but I think that hurts my points too much. Let's. Oh, Jesus. Fuck. Don't love it. Let's take Jalen Brown. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. Fuck. So annoyed. Hmm. I wonder who takes the pull on Clay. Because he is a huge riser because he's got a massive boost in effective field goal percentage. Because he's a negative field goal percentage player, but he's a positive 
in this category, and that swings him a lot. DeJounte at 46. Not the greatest in this format, but yeah. Ooh, ooh. I need points, and I need them like now. So my team, yeah, shit. I need points. So maybe we take Clay. Vooch popped with his effective field goal. I disagree, Dan. But anyway, he did have a good effective field goal percentage last season. I agree. Martin. Martin, this looks like a Jalen Green spot for you. Huh. Nick Claxton. Good pick. Good pick. The other guy who's going to get a real bump up the RC. Ooh. Ooh. Simon's hero. They're the guys. I my scoring is in the shitter. Clay helps. Simon's helps more. And I know he's still really valuable here though. Why is OG so valuable? Strong effective field goal percentage, strong steals. But not a great points guy, marginally above average. Hmm. So we've got eight analysts here. We've got four listeners, followers, fantasy enthusiasts. DeRozan. His effective field goal percentage is not as high because he is shit at threes. He doesn't completely avoid them. Like someone who takes zero threes is more valuable than someone who takes like one a game and hits him at 24%. So that's why Mobley's value drops and DeRozan's drops. Which is going to be something to watch. But Mike does have a, a really strong team to start off with. Obviously, when you start with Jokic, but he's got Van Vliet, Bridges, DeRozan, eight, and It's a pretty strong spot. And now we are two picks away as Dominating goes. So, well, my rebounds are putrid my assists are good but not great so what do I do here Beal I ooh, maybe it's Beal I was looking at Clay what's well, Beal is Beal a 20 point scorer we think this season what if Marty takes Beal I've got two guards I've got a forward I've got a center Jalen's a guard forward Jaron's a forward center we took Simons, Marty did. Okay. Let's add that to five people who I think are using Basketball Monster. Six, including me. How very interesting. I got it. Mitch. Mitch is going to take Beal here. I know he is. Oh, he takes Drusif. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay. All right. OG is the top of my projection board at the moment. But we're going to take Beal here. And that will now we slot Jalen across to be a forward. Hmm. Now I do need to make sure I'm getting. A Gafford, a Zach Collins. Oh, Zach Collins will be a big value boost. So will a Kongwu. Wendell. Actually, Zach Collins doesn't. He boosts a little bit. Not as much as I thought he would. Interesting. Oh, Maxi. Okay. Yeah, no, that's pretty good. Clay and Cam Johnson. I know a lot of people are going to be looking at projections. They're going to see them high up in this spot, but they're like, how far can I let them slide? Is it too early to grab them? And you got to play by your league settings. So, am I, did I do that? A little bit, because I had Beal as a top 40 guy. But, these guys are going to be sticking out like dog's balls when it comes back around to my pick. I think this really helps Wagner and Hero as well, as 
fantasy option. Shengun at 55. Kessler goes. Big, he's a big effective field goal guy, obviously, but there are just a lot of negatives to deal with. A lot. Julius Randle, that is a choice that I wouldn't have made, but Sam, um, yeah, you didn't. Your assists are already OP. Your rebounds were low. We're all chasing Mike at the moment from pick one. And then Karen at five, Mitch and Sloan and me are the top five in projections at the moment. Well, there goes Ananobi, which that is a, I think that's a pretty good steal for you, son. Zion at 58. Huh. Actually, not bad. Another guy who gets a big jump up here is Michael Ponder Jr. for his elite three-point shooting. The Bronco goes at 59. I'm so interested to see what he does this season. Uh, Alex, what are you going to do? Another rookie? Franz Wagner should get picked around this zone too. Who is going to take the... Once you see someone take the plunge... I know that Marty's going to be in on it because he took Simons early. Um, once you see someone take the plunge on Clay or Cam Johnson, then shit is on. Alex is going to take Giddy. It's my guess. I don't know why I'm guessing that. Or he's going to take... Who is he going to take? I don't know. I thought I knew you, Alex. And you've changed... Oh, he did take Giddy. Nailed it. Bang. Let's go. I'm back. Now I don't know what he's going to do. I hope... Well, he's going to take Vassell is my next guess. Hmm. Sorry for the silences. I've got. To, I'm paying more attention to this draft than I do in a mock, where it's more about talking through things and learning and discussing and seeing trends. This is about can I crush these assholes into the dirt? Probably won't, but you know, can I be competitive at least? Let's be fair. Like fantasy is fun, right? It's about having fun. I don't really think that you go into fantasy leagues. Is this like great money making venture? It's not a great way to make money. You put your money in for five months of the year with a like eight percent chance of maybe maybe bringing back five x six x on your investment, maybe in this sort of a format. I don't think that's yeah. You know, entering and the more leagues you enter, the yeah you know, the the more risk you have the less your winning percentage is and the less you pay attention to those leagues. So it's one of those things where it's fun having money on the line. It's all a little bit of a bonus. But I think entering season-long fantasy leagues as a big money-making venture is not a particularly great use of that cash, would be my guess. I don't know why I just went through all that. So look, yeah, putting money on the line makes it more interesting for sure. But... Honestly, the number one thing we do this for is fun. It's investment into the league. It's investment in, in players and learning. That's that's what I like about it too. Franz goes at 62. Good pick from you, Sloan. Or oh, Alex did take Ingram at 61. All right. Vassell goes at 63. So we haven't seen the Clay Thompson trigger pull yet. I what am what am I looking? Yeah, my rebounds are fucking useless. Scott Barnes goes at 64. How am I going to get these rebounds up, though? Oh. Wendell? It's too early for Wendell, man. I know I'm picking at 69, Giggity. Do I take Ponder? Jarrett Allen? Maybe it's a Kongwu that I take. My rebounds are shocking. Bad, they're terrible. I'm sitting at like a one in that category. Everything else is all right. Rudy Gobert goes at 65. That's not going to help my rebounds, is it? Maybe. Oh, shit. How do I take a Kongwu in round six when I don't even... Like, he might play 20 minutes. I can't do that. I can't. 
Wendell? I don't like that pick, though. Or maybe I do rebounds the round after. Because my assists aren't... No, but who's there? Who can assist? Tyler Hero is who I want. Sorry, Josh. Fuck, shut up. Just take Tyler Hero. Uh, assist legend. I'm annoyed. Are oh, you absolute... Fuckhead. Oh. All right. Reassessment. Shut up, Josh. Work out what you're doing. Mmm. Now nah, that's fuck, that's annoying. Do I? Oh, you f fuck, Cam Johnson. I don't know what to do here. Jarrett Allen. I, don't, I shouldn't feel good about that. That's disgusting. Ugh. Fucking Jared Allen. Damn it. You, two picks in a row. The two guys I wanted. Ugh. I want Clay now. I want Clay on the way back. Fuck, fuck you. Ugh. Ugh, frustrations. Frustrations. All right. Got to be nimble. Got to adjust. Got to curse this bloke and his family. But then adjust. I needed those rebounds, but then it puts me in free throw peril. Not really peril. I'm at 79. Mitch takes Pirtle. Okay. Okay. That's f <laughs> Jakob Pertle. Marty takes Jez Grant, which is solid enough. Boosting some scoring. What the f Middleton at 72. You've got oh, Scooter. Wow, that is early, Michael. Wow, that is early. Good luck. Um, yeah, two picks away. Well, Clay is looking top 45 for me, and we are at pick 70. Am I... Nah, I need Clay. Clay is my guy here. I think. Or is it Chris Paul? Or is it Michael Ponder? Mm, Austin Reeves? No, we're going to... Oh, Jesus Christ. When's Jar going to go? That's got to be soon. Because we've got stash ability. Paulo Bunkera is going to sit at the top of this queue for a long time, I'm guessing. Um, mm, Clay is my... Oh, for fuck's sake, Marty. My projections are working against me. Huh. Now that is cinema. There's only one 20 point scorer, two 20 point scorers, three 20 point scorers in my projections left. And one of them is Paolo. One of them is Kuz, who I do not want here. But that need for points. Or oh, Jar, sorry, Jar. Oh, do I take Jar Morant? Marcus Smart goes. Could, could Austin Reeves push 18 points? Throw a Congo into the queue. I'm never going to get him. Oh, just got absolutely rooted with those picks. Mm. I took Austin Reeves, by the way, at 76. Okay. 
Mike's team looks like it's close to punting blocks. Him and Curran are both really low in blocks. My team's really low in blokes that I wanted. Marky Williams at 77. Well, Curran trying to help his rebounds and blocks, which were very low. He needed to do it. I also need to do it, but I want I needed scoring more. And I how many picks away? Fifteen. A Congo's not Gafford goes, no, no, there's no chance a Congo is coming back to me now. But I might be able to get Wendell or have a crack at Jabari later on. Oh, Great. So, uh, I, I think my name's funny. I enjoy it. Dan's is the best. Mojo Roto Casa House. <laughs> That's top level. And when I talk about funny fantasy names in the other shows, so I don't make player pun names. So they're not usually good. Although I don't mind Mitch's itty bitty giddy committee. That's not bad. These are the funny names that I go for. The Mojo Roto Casa House is a cracker. I like mine, but, you know, what am I going to do? Of course I'm going to like it. That's why I used it. Christian James at 79. Does CJ look good to me in this format? Oh, no, he doesn't. Oh, okay. That's good. Always want players that I don't want to go off the board. That is better than the alternative. Okay. We are 80 picks in. We're going 192 deep in this. 16 player draft. I firmly believe that I wish... No, no, no. That doesn't sound right. I just want these sites that dictate so much. Yahoo, ESPN, your defaults smell, they stink. Why have we got three bench players? It makes no sense. We use these guys every day in a head-to-head format. Why do we have three benches? What's a standard fantasy football league? It's like 10 starters, 10 bench or something. Three bench is crazy. Fultz goes at 80. Was he around for me? Was he on my... Ooh, he's a little bit down. I... Collins is going to come in there for me as well. These are these three centers with solid enough... Oh, yeah, Kongwu, no. I had a Kongwu, Carter, and um, Zach. Got Jabari in there too, who can be solid enough both percentage players. Toby Harris is going to be a good pick. Michael Ponder and Chris... Oh, hang on a second. Why is Chris Paul still around? Um, Christoph Paul. My next pick is 93. So I am 100% taking Chris Paul if he's there. I will also take Michael Ponder if he is there. Oh. <sighs> Oh, there goes Wendell as Sloan takes him. We're getting to the stage where this Chris Paul number doesn't make sense. Alex with Kuzma. He's really looking after his scoring there with Kuzma and Roger, which I understand. Wow, what an interesting team he has. Just a crazy looking team. My rebounds are bottom of the barrel. And I don't want to live in a world where they're bottom of the barrel. Interestingly, in this draft, in projected standings, Johnny Drama, which is current, his team is projected first and he is punting two categories. But he is tops in two and top three in four total. Whereas me, I am 77195751111. Need to bump some of those numbers up. And remember, when you're drafting in Roto as well, you can bump your numbers up, but you also move when others bump their numbers down. So be aware of that. Tyus Jones goes at 86 there. Really starting to think these blokes, aren't they? In a Roto league, we've got a games cap of 85. We can take flyers on the bench. We have to be able to take flyers on a bench in that scenario. Who's going to take Ben Simmons here, by the way? We know his free throws are useless. The threes are useless, but his effective field goal percentages are positive because he doesn't take any threes. 
Jackson, that is very smart, taking Ja Morant there. Hmm. That's a good spot in a roto. Uh, Trey Murphy will be someone to look at too. So my bigs, Zach and Jabari are still there. James like Russell. Huh. Huh. My rebounds are still terrible. So do I take Paul? What are my assists like? Oh, they're strong. They probably... Ugh. Do I build assists and say eat a deck to rebounds? Maybe. That's a tough call. Who's next in rebounds? Marty. Um, I'm only just behind Marty. Michael Ponder goes, well, that's gone for me. You can't take that one. Huh. Really annoyed that Chris Paul is still there. Would Zach come back to me at 100? I don't know. We're getting into stinker territory soon. Thick Hogsman, Toby Harris goes at 90. That is pretty good there, I think. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm doing the debate here. Is it Zach? Or I cannot... Pa- How do I pass a potential top 50 guy in this format, Chris Paul, with injury protection because it's Roto? Oh, I can't do it now because this dickhead, after he took Hero two rounds ago, essential quality, takes Chris Paul. So, mm, now what do we do? Because Ponder and Paul were sitting at the top. Next is Trey Murphy, and I'm not doing that. Keegan Murray? Now I'm gonna, oh, I think I'm just going to have to snag Zach, I think. Now, Karen, if you do it... Oh, you, how did you do that? Ah, sake. What do I do now? Duran? Great. Jesus Christ, what now? Oh, let's take Duran. To say I am mildly displeased would be a mild understatement. Every fucking time. Lost Hero, lost Cam Johnson, lost Clay. It's going to happen, but far out. Lost Zach, lost Paul, two picks in a row. That's twice now where Essential Quality and Johnny Drama have just taken the two blokes that I wanted two picks before me. Absolute nonsense. Imagine me organizing this league and these blokes don't leave the guys that I want that they don't know that I want. Bloody hell. I... Mm. I'm annoyed. Fuck. Do Anthony melt anybody? Hurts the points too much. That Duran addition is going to hurt my free throws, which weren't great, but it helps my boards. It helps my adjusted field goals a lot. My adjusted field goals are, are probably in the too strong category now. Draymond Green goes at 95. So the problem with adding Green, not that it's a bad pick, but he has such a big drop in your points category, you might go from, I think, Mar- well, let's have a look. Marty was eighth. He got, well, not eighth. He was getting eight points from the points category, which is 12 and nine, fifth overall. And let's see when I update the projections. 
where his points come in. I was getting seven points. He was getting eight. Let's see what me adding Duran and he adding Draymond does to that calculus. If Mike would ever pick. So I need all picks in a round to be done before Draft Tracker will fully update it on the standings tab. Anyway, it updates my team immediately. Well, Keegan Murray is a very good pick in this format, Michael Catron. So let's see what that did to Marty's scoring. And he went from an eight. Holy shit. He went from an eight to a three. I went from a seven to a five because I've added, added Duran. The two top teams are the two top teams in points. The two top, the two, two of the top three in threes and two of the top three in rebounds. That is not a trend that I expected. And they are both punting two categories. Also, not a trend I expected. Curran is low in assists and blocks, and Sam is low in blocks and free throws. Competitive draft is meaning that punting can be successful if you're smashing top twos and top threes, which these guys are. And I only have, I'm number one in E field goal and number two in blocks and number three in rebounds now adding during. That's a big change adding during there because I was down at like getting four roto points and now I'm like ninth, so I'm fourth, sorry, in roto, in uh, rebounds. So I do need some steals. Asa. Didn't we use it 98? What on earth do I do here? Sorry for the silence. Um, Maximum Derek? Emmanuel Quickly. Emmanuel Quickly. Ooh, there goes Ben Simmons. Asar Thompson, I just, I worry. I worry about the gigantic percentage hit I would take. The uh, the effective field goal might be under 50, which is a killer. I am very high in that category. Does he bring enough in the other spots to offset? Pick 100. Let's maximize our Derek White content. As usual, I do not like that pick. What a tough draft. If you guys are still watching this, we are currently debating as an analyst community, trying to start up some high profile, high prestige, maybe analyst only leagues, which we would promote and discuss throughout the season. Would you be interested in hearing that content as I floated out here for the first time? It's, I'm obviously, this was a late night, like 11 p.m. brainstorm I had last night. Um, and I've left it extraordinarily late. To, we couldn't fully launch it this season anyway. But it's something that I'm looking at. Oh, here comes Obi into the room. Hello, Obi. Obi, I asked people today what what would be one thing they would want extra on the show. And they, some of them said they want more Obi. So here you are. Do you want to come up? Can people see you? Andy Wiggins goes at 103. So well, Jabari Smith's gone. So he's off the queue. There's Obi. I remember last year I had a real problem when doing dra drafts that I would keep saying that somebody was on the board instead of on the clock. I'm not having that problem anymore. Don't know what happened. Hey, random thoughts as I'm doing a draft and trying to figure out how I rescue this team, which took a turn that I wasn't loving. Although, I am projected third at the moment, so I'm loving the direction this is heading. And I probably need to get some steals going with someone. But good thing is, this is the portion of the draft where you can find steals. That was very important for me to get that Duran pick, I think. It gave me a lot of insulation to do some different things. As much as it annoyed me 
to not get the other guys I want. Oh, Sam taking Mitch Robinson. That's an interesting one. Sam is sitting in second currently in projections with the most points, 12 roto points in the points category. He will not be there any longer. But he was sitting with two points in free throws and two points in blocks. So, yeah. He will up in blocks, drop in free throws, drop in points, and probably up in rebounds. That'll be something to watch. So Jackson, who's the one of the biggest Asar Thompson, he always hits me up. So like, see, told you, sir. He loves Asar Thompson. Valanchunas goes, who is a very, very solid um, roto option at that point because rebounds are about to disappear. And that is why I will be looking at Derek Lively as a bench guy because I do not know what other bench players are going to be around. Hey, by the way, Deep Leagues, early season, Pig Williams in Oklahoma City is going to be out. And they mentioned uh, Olivier Saar as someone who can fill in because Kendrick Williams also hurt. So Deep Leagues, two-way legend, who is an absolute stat stuffer, Olivier Saar, on your radar. Put him on there. PJ Washington Jr. goes at 108. Let's see what happened to Sam's team after that addition of Mitchie Robb, where he was 12 in points, two in blocks. Sam went from 12 in points down to a 10 in points. His free throws dropped from a 2 to a 1, and his blocks went from 2 to 5. Huge changes. My points went down to 2. Wow. That's not what we want, is it? Who am I getting points from now? Nobody. Quickly, 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 quickly. Herbert Jones just goes here. People are going to be taking the low-scoring spuds in this round. I've got a Bruce Brown. Don't you... F- Sloan takes a manual quickly. So, yeah, he can go off. Let's maybe Nurk. Didn't think I'd be taking as many centers, but center... Oh, you fucking... Another one. Three in a row, my cue. Quickly, Bruce Brown, Nurkic. I, how do, how do I rescue my points? Who the hell rescues them? Boyan. Jay, no, Jalen Green. There we go. That's a 20 point scorer that's going to flip this thing on its head. Do not, D'Anthony Melton goes at 114. Do not take one of you two dickheads here. Don't do this. Don't do it. Not only is there upside in green, but there is no projected 20-point guys left apart from the horse, Keldon Johnson. And oh, you cannot be fucking kidding. You cannot be serious. How did that happen? There is no... There is no... How did that happen? Fuck. All right. No, no, no. We're not going to... Oh, my God. I'm not going to take Calden. We're going to take Benny Math here. I how did that happen? Every time. In case you missed it, I took Benedict Mather to replace the Jalen Green that got sniped by this bloke, essential quality, who took Hero, Chris Paul, and Jabari Smith out of my queue, and Jalen Green. It has just been an and Zach Levine, to be honest. An absolute sh- and Jim Butler. It's been a shit show of epic proportions. Oh, he didn't take Butler out of my queue. No, I, I won't claim that one. It took Kawhi, though. Mm. Essential quality, I don't know your name because even your email address doesn't have a name in it. But fair to say we're enemies. You too, Karen. Trey Murphy, good pick you from Mitch. He's going to be obviously very strong. Not obviously. He's going to be pretty strong when he comes back. Hey, Mike Conley. Um, Mike reckons he's going to break rules. What are you going to do, Mike? Mike took Buddy Heald before Ben Matherin. Oh, why? That's a good one. If you don't remember, Curran is the guy that won Locked on Fantasy Basketball Bowl last season, the points edition. So yeah, he's uh, what you would call annoying. Not as a bloke, he's a good bloke. Annoying to draft with. Mm. 
Mick Conley. I just mentioned him, Marty. What are we making of Fanta Pants coming off the bench? Well, he's just gone off the bench and onto Mike's team. I'm going to just try and roll him up here. A bench player in round 10. There you go. Let's see what he says. How he responds to that. What do you mean a bench player? How does my team look? Now, um, mm, oh yeah, my team projected just big, big boost. I still need steel. So is that, I was going to say the Bruce Brown territory, but he's gone, isn't he? Yeah, someone snagged him off the queue. That Matherin one was a nice little godsend. I didn't see him. It was Shaden Sharp for me. Cobit White. Oh, the horse. Mm, okay, this one is going to be Bogdanovich from Martin, I'm pretty sure, or Josh Hart. That's my so my idea here. But what am I doing? What am I actually trying to do? Threes, steals, free throws. A lot of those guys around. Sadich? Maybe maybe Kobe. He's not a steals guy though. I'm fuck almost typed that into the chat. God. That'll be a disaster. Al Horford. Fine, Marty. Go for it. Although in Roto, his games are missed, aren't as important. When do I pull the lively trigger? Probably round twelve. Shaden Sharps in the mix here. And Jalen, oh, when does Jalen Johnson go? That is the one that we want to start taking flyers on as well. Shade on. All right. Cobit, let's go. Kobe White, 124. So Jalen and Lively would be two guys I'd be very interested in swinging back around. And I hope people start taking the boring Bogdanovich, although Boyan is someone I want. Uh, I hope that someone takes um, guys like um, DiVincenzo or Pat Williams or the Depressed Penis. or Josh. I'm surprised Josh Hart has actually lasted this long because he normally is gone by now. But again, the scoring from him is just so bad and the upside is also... Probably a little bit limited, although Josh Hart would work on my team. Jeremy Sohan goes. It's a bit of an upside flyer. Let's see how these guys who have been so head-to-head drafty decide they're going to approach these rounds now. Especially the guys that have injured players like the Trey Murphys and the Jar Morants. Who you take at 11 is going to be starting for you for big periods of time. Who took Jar? Jackson did. And Mitch took Trey Murphy, so he's got shade in there. That's a pretty good replacement. Doesn't matter who starts or who finishes. <laughs> it's actually who gets more minutes. Dennis Schroeder. Jordan Clarkson, 129. Happy for these guys who are not really... Clarkson's points are are important. Are important. Um, Aaron Gordon, Jaden Ivey. Uh, let's throw Bilal into the queue. Jaden Hardy into the queue because I'd love Hardy's a guy that when you've just got a little bit of a games played deficit and he's starting, we'll, we'll give him a couple. We'll give him a couple in there. 
And that's part of the value or the strategy, I guess, in Roto is that I have these guys on your bench that you can give five little game boosts in there and then put them back out when they're not in an ideal situation. It's not always just about, hey, I think this guy can actually be top 100 rest of season. It's like, are there very comfortable or very easy situations where they might get a five game boost, a 10 game boost, and then back to the bench? So I'm sort of approaching it a little bit that way. Josh Hart has no picture, apparently. Good pick from you, though, Sloan. He probably fell, definitely fell too far. Who in this group will do the Miles Bridges? Who will take it? Someone will. I know they will. They put 50 bucks in. Actually, yeah, for me, that's like 75 bucks with exchange rates. Actually, I think it turned into $80. Oh, no, Rick Lean. What are you doing with rookies? That's the one I wanted because fucking, how do you get a big man? <sighs> right, I've, got, I've got to get Jalen Johnson. Well, I don't have, I'm not going to because I know that whoever this bloke is, essential quality, old EQ himself, is going to grab. Oh, he take, what is going on with you, Alex? Rick Kaminga. Um, essential quality is going to come in and he's going to snag Jalen Johnson and I'm going to get annoyed. Sloan, I'm shocked you didn't take Quentin Grimes, who's at the top of my queue as well. Amen. Oh, of course you did, Jackson. You you, you jumped the amen, the, the, the amends. You jumped the Thompsons together. Paul Reedy Reed in round 12. Not as good in this format than a regular category head-to-head, but still. Value. Where is my team? What's I haven't even looked at where am I sitting in terms of projected points. Uh, rebounds, steals, points threes, assists and adjusted field goal, effective field goal, pretty good. Jaden McDaniels. Um, what is Thunder Dan going to do? Jaden Ivey is a pick that I might make, but I do want... Jalen. Huh. Huh, This is a long draft. Didn't think it would go this long, but I forgot we've got minute timers and and a deeper bench and people are thinking a lot. Oh, Dan. There goes Jalen Johnson. Jesus. Denny Avdia goes. Well, I didn't really want him EQ, but does that trigger somebody to take Bilal? I think Bilal's going to have a stinking, a stinking E field goal. No one's gone with Toppen or Eason yet either, or Aaron Gordon. It's my pick. Lavert goes. What do I do? I've got Kalabali there, Hardy there, Ivy there, Bogdanovich there. Um, this is my 12th guy. I won't use him very much. Is there enough pop-off ability in Boyan? He's definitely not a steals guy, is he? Or do I just... Do I just go upside? Suggs? Time's running out, Josh. Make a f- move. Jaden... O- oh, God, I don't want to... Jaden Ivy. how did I even land on that? That's just one that doesn't work in my projections at all, but I needed to just take a bit of can you be my 10th best guy sort of upside flyer. Now we'll go a little safer with Bogdanovich E. Eason. I don't know. When does Bilal go? Not for a while, I'm guessing. Um... Grimes... Oh, Grimes. Why isn't Grimes going? Again, limited upside. Grimesy. Oh, there goes Sug. So Mitch was thinking similarly to me. Yeah, he was. Um, no one's really jumping on Grimes. Why is Grimes' value looking so good in my system? It's threes. Uh, it's his E field goal, which I don't 
really neat. There are no bigs here at all. So maybe that is making Toppen or Gordon more interesting. Oh, there goes Bilal. Okay. We're getting into the, like, that's stash and blokes territory. So, yeah, I... <sighs> and this will be the end of 12 rounds after Mike picks. And that will be meaning we've got four to go. What injury risky sort of guys do I have? Well, Allen's currently hurt. Beal's had some history and LeBron, obviously. Jaron, not particularly strong. So it means, yeah, my 11 and 12 will be used. So getting a Boyan in there, although he's so bad at everything else, it's not points and threes. But it's not like I'm... Mike is really thinking here. Oh, well, there you go. I can't take Boyan Bogdanovich, can I? Because Michael took him. Isn't that just very interesting? And then he takes Tari second season. My rebounds are bad. My steals are bad. How do I get them back? I can't, can I? What are my actual rebounds? I'm projected actually it's 5.8 per game. That's not that bad. But it is in comparison to everybody else. Everyone else got high rebounds. But there's so many guards forwards here. Ooh, Kyle Anderson. Um, do I just... Grimes? Is there enough upside in Grimes? Does Grimes have more upside than, say, Brandon Miller? I don't know about that. What I can consider in this draft is I've got Jaron, I've got Halliburton. What about a, a McConnell and an Aldama stash? 15 and 16. Won't use them, but if my first round guys go down, I get their backups who would be McConnell top 60, Santi probably top 100. And I don't have to use them. Marty takes the speaker, Keynote George, who's going with Bill Allen, Keontae. He's taken upside flyers there. After going Horford in 11 and Conley in 10 with some safety, reasonable strategy, very good strategy. Grimes is the guy projected the best for me, but his main strength is E field goal, and I don't I don't need that. There's no point in me getting stronger in that. How do I get steals? Well, Grimes can be good at that. Dante is not going to play enough. Caruso, no enough scoring. KCP, or oh, Obert Toppin goes. What's Aaron Gordon's story? Why is he... Uh, it's free throws, that's why. But... What about Zubats? Bad free throws. Um, Upsides. Let's just do... Can Grimes actually... Oh, man, I'm struggling. Can Grimes actually break out? Um, Gordon. Let's take Gordon. Sit him on the bench if the free throws are too bad. <sighs> that was annoying. Still want to let him slide anymore. He's my 13th player. I won't have to use him every game. Um, yeah, but that hurts my free throws a lot. Like a lot. Puts them down at like 79. And they were at 81, I think, before. Oh, yeah. Just waiting for Alex to take like the most random player ever. I am going to be... You thought I was annoyed earlier. If someone follows the TJ McConnell, Santi Aldama idea that I had there for round 15, 16, I'm going to flip my fucking lid. Josh Richardson go. Will Kyle Lowry go? I think at this point, Lowry is going to start ahead of Richardson, which I don't know how, how I feel about that. Well, I don't know how I feel. I don't think it's very smart, but apparently Lowry has been good in camp. 
There are no bigs here that I want. And there's no bigs. Who are the upside bigs? There's none of them. They don't exist. Or Steven Adams. But we know the problem there. Hart Hartenstein. Hartenstein. Roto legend, Isaiah Hartenstein. Kyle Anderson, 149. Richardson, 150. We're getting to the stage where the, a lot of these guys you won't use. So, Brandon Miller, that's where we're starting to get into this area. Um, but you've also got to consider who might get a 15-game start because that's useful too. <sighs> Sam just winding it back here. Do you guys find these real drafts where I am not talking as much interesting? Is it stuff that you enjoy the content of more than a bunch of mocks? Is anyone still watching this? Zubats goes 152. Pretty stross, pretty smart pick, actually. Struis at 153. Hopefully it's a neat... Ooh, Stephen Adams. This bloke is really leaning into the free throws. Um, Grimes at 155 is good from Sloan. Looney 156, that's 13 rounds done. Um, Dylan Brooks, wow. What is Alex is just going completely off type here. Dylan Brooks. Is he alright? Is this actually Alex? Javon Carter goes at 158. Wow. Alright, so we are 13 rounds in. If somebody takes Santi Aldama and Tyrese Halliburton, we know what might be another inch. Like who is the team that's at the top here? Karan. Who is his first round pick? Can I be a prick? Jason Tatum. So is there a good replacement guy that I can get? There's not. Who else is near the top? Sam. My mate, Essential Quality, Lillard. There's no one replacing there. What about Sam Doncic? Eh. Well, that's a hardy pick, actually. So when he hurts, I gain. Huh. Jarris Walker. Do I... Hmm. I think I'm going to go Hardy. I got my three got my three cues are Hardy, Aldama, TJ McConnell. I am not looking for current value. I am looking for strategic upside plays. And I think Zeke Naji would be another interesting guy to grab in case Mike loses Jokic and Naji has to start. But we know the history. As soon as Na as soon as Naji gets a chance, he gets hurt anyway. Huh. Johnny Drama, current. If you dick me here, the other guy. Oh, that is he did it. He did the thing. He took Nas Reed after he took Towns. I was just about to say that. You all right? So let's try and screw over the Doncic guy by taking Hardy. That's very smart from Curran, and he's doing what I was doing. Do I prioritize McConnell or Aldama? Hmm. How far down on this is TJ? 222. Shout out to Richie Benno. Two for 222. Mitch Casey is going to take Bob Covington here. Who's going to do the Miles Bridges? Anybody? 
Russell Westbrook. Huh. Norm Powell's still around. He's pretty good. Malcolm Brogdon's still around. My voice isn't. Malik Monk. Oh, there you go, Marty. I like that from you, Kyle Lowry. That's pretty good there. No Monk, no Beasley yet. No Covington. I'm trying to go very strategic. Do I have anybody currently with injured tags? Oh, I do. Reeves, James, Duran, Allen, Hardy. Straight after the draft, they are going into IR and I am making claims on blokes. And then we move back and forward. And I will have a group of about 10 blokes that I want to grab. Someone will be asking if there's anyone still watching. Hey, shout out to you if you're still watching. Um, hey, you're going to do a show on Locked On Fantasy Basketball Bowl ADP data? Yes, when the draft's finished. But they're not finished. 85%, 90% are finished. They are not all finished. What's our league ID? It is that one. Harrison Barnsey Barnes. Mike got auto-picked. Mike, that's unlucky for you. Do I take McConnell? Or do I think if I take McConnell, it will tip others off to grab their guys, but that might enable Santi to fall through. The other one that I could take is Nempard, but his upside isn't as big as TJ's. Jim Wiseman goes. I'm not even sure Wiseman's going to play. I think I take TJ over Nempard, and then when I get these injured guys stashed, ooh, John Isaac, I might grab Nempard there and see. We are going to pull the McConnell button next. I don't know. I wonder how many people will queue onto that. Now, I'm pretty sure Curran will because he did it. There it is. Mitch takes Miles Bridges, which is grubby but smart. I don't mean grubby. Yeah, he just said I feel dirty. Um, Timothy John. Strategy, that is. I don't think McConnell will play most nights, but I do not care in this format. Um, Cameron Payne. That is a very sm- that you know what I was thinking about it before. He's, don't what don't tell me Karen's thinking the same thing. He's trying to kill this guy's Lillard player, which is very smart. That I didn't even think of that before. Maybe I could have taken Payne instead of Hardy. Yeah, that's extremely smart, Karen. He's got Reed and Payne there. Thibel. He's good when you need a little category boost for sure. I'll. Karen, I love what you're doing. I might, I'm going to flip you a DM after this and just see if you're doing what I think you were doing. I'm pretty sure you're doing it. Um, the other one, no, this is the one I could take. No, I'm taking a son here. So I could take Xavier T. Illman, but no, he won't be the replacement. Brogo at 175. Interesting pick of Jarris Walker and Brandon Miller in there. Some nice little upside sits on your bench. My upside guys are Ivy, it's Hardy, it's Kobe, it's Math, and my injury upside of McConnell and Santi. No Terrence Mann yet. I'm not even looking at standings anymore, by the way, because I'm just trying to do some strategic, strategic thinking. It's not about needs. It's not about anything. It's about who can be... Who can jump me 10 rounds, 7 rounds for 10 games of the year? A Linux a good one. Stewart, 177. Don't love that one. Not really sure how Stewart gets there. Malik Beasley at 178. That's pretty good. Norman Power, 179. If 
Did Peyton Pritchard go? Fuck, why do I have to keep saying this? Oh, is that Hartenstein? And Peyton Watson. No Julian Strowler. Peyton Watson. Okay. I wonder if Mike should be taking Zeke Nagy, I think, with his pick. Let's see. KCP. Solid, but will you ever use him? Maybe you will. Son, what are you going to do? What's Jackson's pick first? Um, but Peyton Pritchard is an interesting name to draft. Malik Monk, that's a good pick. Horton Tucker, good pick also. Even though I think he's shit, it's a good pick. He might be a starter. Um, I'm just going to scan the list. I think Aldama's the, the, the way... Bones would be another interesting one. Duarte might start in Sacramento too. No one's taken Christian Brown either. I don't think he's a particularly strong... Ooh. Ooh, 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 um, Charles Bassey? Priority free agent ad. Undrafted free agent. Um, I think the Aldama move is going to work and I can't wait to talk to... Or I can't wait to see what Curran does here. Does he, if he takes Aldama, I will kill the bloke. I'll wait for him to come back to Australia and I'll get him. Lou Dort? What? Fine, Dan, take Lou Dort. Couldn't pay me to take him. I mean, you could. I'd take the money. Gordon Haywood, that is strong from you, EQ. That is amazingly strong. Why was Gordon Haywood still there? Gabe Vincent, another one who should be interesting. DeAndre Hunter, too. And... Yeah, that's so smart, Curran. I know you don't have Vooch, but Andre Drummond is a great pick. Let's take Aldama. I'm trying a little bit more to insulate my own top players, but you took a couple of real, like Reed Payne Drummond, even Levert, super strong. Martin goes Santi Aldama. Yeah, Martin. Santi Aldama. <clears throat> Didn't... Re yeah, there you go. Charles Bassey. There's one. My undrafted free agent play does not work. Martin doesn't raise an eyebrow at me taking TJ McConnell. Kevin Porter. Okay. Free agent legend, Kevin Porter Jr. This is a long draft. And the last pick, Michael Catron. Again, projected standings are not going to reflect the reality of this league. Cam Thomas, that is an interesting pick too. So that is the draft over. I will... I think Analysis Monster on Basketball Monster will give me better results because it puts the games cap limits in. But still, a lot of what we did was strategic. So my team, Halliburton at pick four. Round two, Jaron Jackson, then LeBron. Jalen Brown in round four. Brad Beal, five. Jarrett Allen in six. Reeves in seven. Duran in eight. Derek White in nine. Ben Mather in 10. Kobe White, 11. Jaden Ivey, 12. Aaron Gordon, 13. Jaden Hardy, 14. Timothy John McConnell, 15. And Santi Aldama at 16. Let's have a quick look at Analysis Monster for this league. Where do I come out? Prioritize players, play games limit. Yes, yes, yes. Um, all right. So, Curran on top, me second, Mike third, with one and a half points separating the top. Actually, I need to change something on that um, quickly because, again, using games cap, all your bench doesn't get used, and I've got upside picks there, I believe. Yeah. And so, so do others. So do others. Let's got to adjust something on that. Let's have a look. Um, uh, actually, yeah, that adjustment just flipped things a little bit. So, 
Curran at one, Mike two, me at three, Jackson four, Martin, then Martin, Mitch, EQ, all tied at five. And the projected Roto points difference between number seven, which is essential quality, and number one, which is Curran, is four. That's tight, man. Then Sam is next. Then Sloan, Sun, Dan, and Alex down the bottom. Okay. Well, there you go. A real money draft in the books. Roto, some different strategies towards the end. I hope you guys found that interesting, and I cannot wait to go just quickly talk to Karen about this. Follow this podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the old Odyssey app. And I said Stitcher, didn't I? On YouTube, thumb it up and leave your comments down below, guys. We are done here. There's a long one. If you're here at the end, tell me Alligator Loki. Comment. Don't put it in the chat. Drop it in the comments. Helps the algorithm. Alligator Loki. Put that in the chat, guys. We're done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.